special moment arises. I'm Grady, the Professor Matthews, and I have never had an honor quite like this. This is George Rood, one of the subjects of the Legends of the Road uh, stories. This is Bill Weenie Beanie Staten, uh, one of our greatest players. Eddie Taylor, the best bank pool player that ever lived. Nobody beat him playing nine ball banks or one pocket. Cornbread Red and Beanie, I know you're dying to ask some questions here. <laughs> well, it, it's an honor really to be up here with these gentlemen. We're in Louisville, Kentucky at the Derby City Classic. And I'm telling you, this is a Johnston City throwback. And where would you run into George Rube, Cornbread Red, Eddie Taylor, and many other people here that aren't up here with us? Anyway, my good friend Eddie Taylor here on my right. Eddie, I remember one time that we were flying back from Denver to Chicago. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, uh, all I can tell you is when we got on the plane, the plane took off and all the dishes fell down, and I thought the world was coming to an end. And the next thing I know, the, the electricity, the, the uh, uh, not the ushers, the, the people that took care of the, uh, the, the uh, people on the plane, they were running back and forth, and Beanie said, I, there's something, I smell something burning. And sure enough, they was, we thought, didn't know what was going to happen. And finally, we made it to Chicago, and they put us on another plane. But uh, that was one scary moment for us. Yeah, but the plane actually had an electrical fire, and the pilot did not make any, uh, any uh, effort to turn the plane around. Fortunately, Eddie had had a few drinks. I was scared to death. He said, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Well, we made it anyway, yeah, didn't we, Eddie? We sure did. Uh, I want to say one more quick thing about Eddie Taylor. We just had a wonderful bank pool tournament, all the best bank pool players in the world. And Eddie, uh, your high run at banks is up in the 30s, isn't it? Well, I, I ran 37. But, That's uh, disgusting, but I, continue. I don't think uh, this will ever be beaten because nobody plays that way anymore. I was playing a fella, uh, racking all the balls, all 15 balls, and, and we were playing for $2 a bank. Well, there was 12 balls left on the table. I banked the 12. I broke the balls and made a ball on the break and ran the 15. And the next game, he broke the balls, didn't make any balls on the break, and I ran 10. So, uh, but I, nobody plays that way anymore. Back then, we all played with 15 balls and played safe a lot. But nowadays, they break them wide open, which it makes the game real short. Now because a lot of times, they break uh, the balls and run five and out. Now, we'll get to red in a minute, too. Uh, so, I I, I'm George. just sorry that I missed sorry, I mean the bank you. boo. I, well, okay. you would have enjoyed it. Uh, I didn't mean to be rude and interrupt no, 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 you, no, but no. I want to get to George here. Uh, I asked him tonight when he joined us in the booth what his high run was playing straight pool, and I don't remember exactly what it was, George. 280. My high run's 280. And the best best day I ever had, I played 50 or no count, 100 points. I run 100 and out 11 times. That was the best day I ever had. That's also disgusting, aren't you? A little bit ashamed of yourself? <laughs> no, I was very pleased with myself that time. <laughs> and back here... This is a guy that it's been an honor to have him as my friend. Don't you feel that way, Beanie? He's what, the most feared <laughs> money player probably of all time. I don't know whether they can see you very well, but stand up for us, will you, Red? Uh, this is our friend, Cornbread Red, Mr. Billy Burge. He is a Kentuckian, too. Uh, one time in Detroit, I ran one pocket on a snooker table, and I run 10 and out 10 times on a <laughs> snooker table. I was playing Duke Paul, and he's playing right down here below us right now. Well, you were the, you know, you were a character boy all these years. It was a lot of fun <laughs> to be around you. It's something exciting was going to happen. Anyway, this is uh, a lot of history here. Man, don't you feel that way, Beanie? I mean, I'm honored just to be sitting here in this group. Absolutely, and I was very surprised that George was here. I know he's like 85, is that correct, That's George? Right. 85. 85 years uh -huh. old and uh, still going strong. I, I don't know what is I, the... I still play a little bit, but not uh -huh. a whole lot. I can't make the long, tough ones, but I, I can manage Mr. White. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just an honor to get together with a group like this in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. It's the greatest tournament since Johnston City. I and, agree. Uh, 
I talked to Eddie a couple of weeks ago, and his friend, Alf Taylor from Aspen, Colorado, said that he would fly down there and drive him up here, and they stopped in Knoxville, Tennessee. And Eddie went in the pool room. We didn't get out for two days. <laughs> Telling a few stories, right, Eddie? Well, actually, today we stopped at a billiard room over in Knoxville, uh, and I thought we never was going to get out of there, and I never saw so many people that I didn't realize I didn't, I didn't remember, but so many of them uh, knew me. It was talking about 45 years ago, exactly. and uh, and I just couldn't believe that that many people would be in that room uh, when I happened to drop in, you know. But uh, I wanted to say uh, something about uh, the. Uh, the way they are playing this. I, I'm just sorry that I missed the banks because I really, but I had thought about, I always thought that Donnie Anderson was a tremendous bank pool player, but we all played a little safety back then. We did, we played with the 15 balls and we broke the ball safe, you know, and we played safe on a lot of shot, on nearly every shot if it was a long shot. Uh, so I wanted to see him play with that nine ball rack. I wanted to see him, but I'm sorry I missed it. Well, I'm early. sorry that all the young people didn't get a chance to see you play bank pool when you were at the apex of your yeah. game, and that was beautiful to witness. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, nobody was in your league, even Bugs. He learned from you, and he could never quite beat you, you know, no. and he went on to become maybe the best bank pool player in the world. Yeah. Now, Red played a great game of banks. He dusted off quite a few opponents. He dusted me off playing one pocket <laughs> in Detroit. Yeah, about 40 years ago. After that, after, after that we were good run mate. Good, you know, we were on the road together. Yeah. I want to ask George a question. George, you knew uh, Rags Fitzpatrick quite Very well. well. Will you tell us a little bit about his game and how good a player he well, was? As far as I'm concerned, he was the best all-around player of all times. He played each game very, very well. In one pocket especially. And in nine ball, he, as far as I'm concerned, was about equal to Lassiter mm -hmm. and myself. Uh, he and I played, I suspect, 20 times and probably wasn't uh, more than a game or two. Yeah. I agree with, uh, I agree with uh, Rags, Johnny Fitzpatrick. I agree with his one, about the one pocket because I suggested that he was the best one pocket player that exactly. I ever played. Uh, I, Lingo was past uh, Hayden Lingo's. All, it was all, past his time. An uh, all-around player, he was probably oh, the he better. Was great, and a real gentleman. Yes, sir, that's right. Real uh, by the way, his, uh, his daughter is in uh, my hometown now, and uh, I've gotten acquainted with her, and she's a fine lady. Her husband is a colonel at Wright Field. So, um, I, su I suggested that uh, they put him in that uh, magazine the same as they did me, and they followed it through, and I appreciated it. They called uh, uh, Staten, and he confirmed it, and uh, between uh, his mother, his wife, and his daughter, and, and uh, Weenie Beanie here, myself, we put together a, a, a right nice piece, a nice and time. he deserved it. I'd like to say one other thing, Bill. Can I coax you into telling the story about the year you took Eddie to the straight pool tournament in New York and he had never played a game of it in his <laughs> life? Now, that's a cute story. Why don't you relate that to everybody? I think they'll get a big kick out of this. As much as I can remember, a lot of times they had the big world st straight pool championship in New York City, and you had to be invited in order to get there. So it was kind of a closed group up there. Not many of the Southerners. Uh, we didn't play a lot of straight pool there, so therefore we were not invited very much. Eddie got invited up there finally, and rightfully so. And if I'm not mistaken, you, you correct me if I tell this wrong, that the first six games that you played, you lost... Uh, how many, I you, won one and lost five. He won one and lost five. Tell us what, he, what you did on the next seven. Well, Crane was telling me this story. Crane said him and Lassiter was talking to the promoter, and the promoter said, hey, I thought this Taylor could play. <laughs> so now, so Lassiter spoke up and he said, don't worry about Taylor. When the smoke clears, Taylor will be there. I won my last eight in a row. Great. Great. <laughs> he, oh, he picked it up in a hurry. I, I can tell you a little story about the Fat Man that you might uh, enjoy. Right. 
He came to my town when I was just a kid and I was in the room cleaning the tables for the local place. It was before noon and he said, I'd like to find this guy, George. I hear he plays nine ball. I said, well, he doesn't come in until about one o'clock, but I'll play you some until he gets here. <laughs> he, 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 said, he, he said, Sonny, you don't have enough money to play with me. So I went over next door and, and I came back with a handful of money and all in a, in a rubber band, probably $1,000, you see. And I said, is this enough? He said, that's enough. So anyhow, he gets his stick and uh, he's parked out in front of the place in front of a fire plug, had two blondes with him. And he came in, he said, you can break them, Sonny. And we're playing, I don't remember exactly, for fairly good money for nine ball. So I made a ball on a break and I run out and he, uh, he's calling for some powder uh, and he's putting his stick together. <laughs> so um, I broke him and run out and he's uh, working on his chip. And so on, I broke him again and run out and he's uh, uh, standing like so. The fifth game, I broke him run out. He's starting to unscrew. At the end of the sixth game, he never got a turn. <laughs> Not a turn. Didn't, make, didn't shoot a ball. I played fast. I played fast when I was 14 years old, and he was 20. We played a game of one pocket for two dollars and a half, and a game of banks for two dollars and a half. We played all night long, and broke even. Now, there was a story in Washington D.C. in 1945. We played the same way, we, but we played for $50 on the banks and $50 on the one pocket. So I beat him out of 500 The next, he said, come to Philadelphia, I'll play you some for 100 I said, where are you going to play? Uh, the the uh, Philadelphia had the blue law, everything's closed. He said, we can play out at Jimmy Dykes, who used to be the manager of the Chicago White Sox. He said, he has a bowling alley and he has tables downstairs. So we, I said, I'll be there tomorrow, see you around 2 o'clock. So we started playing. He's winning the banks, and I'm winning the one pocket. That goes on for about two hours, but finally I beat him out of 1800 and he quit. He had a pocket full of money left, but he quit. But later on, he told these reporters in, in Florida, we're talking, he said, Eddie, here's great bank pool player, my game was one pocket. So one time we played for three days and nights, and we played for 500 a game, and we played for three days and nights, a game of bank, a game of one pocket, and broke dead even. So I went back over to the billiard room, that believes with two reporters we're talking to and the rest. I went back over to my place, and I told my wife, I said, you won't believe this, I just got the greatest compliment that I ever got in my life. She said, what's that? I said, Pat said, we played three days a night and broke dead even. I said, ain't nobody ever broke even with that. <laughs> That's the only one that ever broke even with him. <laughs> now, Red, you played Patty quite a few times, didn't you? Yeah. And what happened? Too much. Hot beer. You tell him. Tell us about the TV show in Chicago. Now, that's a good story. Uh, he knows more than I do. Well, the only thing about it, uh, Fats played, it was Minnesota Fats show uh, ch on Channel 32, the UHF station, every Monday night, two hours live. He played 13 people. Did you play him, Bill? Yes, yes. All right, he played 13 people, and uh, if you didn't make a ball, you got $600. If you beat him <laughs> two out of the three, you got 700 but if you beat him all three, you got 1000 Now, out of the 13... Only two fellas beat him for a thousand. Mr. I was I was Mr. there. Red. I can I can relate to this Red story. And me. <laughs> and I'd give if I know if anybody knows of how to get in touch with that tape, uh, I'll make it worth their while <laughs> uh, if they'll come and let me know. Me or Red, either one. Minnesota Fats had this, program, had this program in Chicago called Minnesota Fats Hustles the Pros. And each week he would invite a different pro. Now he was the star of this show, so he thought he was inviting a very weak player for his first opponent. It was Cornbread Red. Red came <laughs> in and absolutely just beat him. I remember this. After Red is just shooting him down, he says, uh, Red, 
ain't nobody gonna believe that you beat me. <laughs> so nobody will believe it. But uh, I know that Eddie played, Luther Leicester played, I played him, and uh, it was quite a show. I just want to say what a great honor it is for me individually to be part of the history of, of our hallowed sport. We've had so many wonderful champions like George Rude and Cornbread and Eddie Taylor and you, Weenie Beanie, too. And I'm reminded here, well, thank you for that nice, yeah. well, that's nice of you guys. But what about a guy uh, like Harold Worse that died of cancer at 39? Wasn't he a spectacular player, guys? Yes, he was. He was, to my way of hearing it, I never did the same play, but I heard that he was probably the best all-around player to ever play. Well, you know, he was very Efren Reyes-like in that he took up one pocket, and hell, in one month he was beating good players. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, how, how good that he uh, was playing everything. Of course, they didn't play banks. Uh, you know, uh, George didn't have that in the tournament. He claimed that wouldn't nobody get in it, but uh, there would have been a lot of people who had got in it, especially from Kentucky. Well, let's take a quick second and remind okay. everybody that might not know the Jansko brothers there was a saying about then that was very true. Paulie would steal your eyeball, and Georgie would tell you you look great without it. <laughs> right. So, that's right. They had, they owed the golf course next door, the restaurant, the bar, the pool facility. The only thing they didn't own was a motel, and they were in with that. Yeah. Not many people got away with uh, hardly any money. Right. The tournament was three weeks long. Well, Bob, over that, uh, six weeks long, five weeks long. <laughs> It was quite a time. I know that I, in Johnston City, whom we were speaking about, I spent 11 months of my life in Johnston City. <laughs> now, that's just coming for the tournament, and I was there the year before the tournament where we helped get it started. And uh, anyway, the tournament's lasted 24 days. So you count that up for like 13 or 14 years, and it's almost like 11 months of my life that I spent there in Johnston City. It was a great experience for me. And I'll tell you one thing, fellows out there, if they have this tournament here in Louisville, Kentucky, it is growing like Johnston City did. And the, all the old timers are here, and there's lots of things going on here. So if you get a ch chance to come next year, you should make, put it on your calendar to come to the Derby City Classic, Louisville, Kentucky. Well, at the risk of exhausting our, our wonderful champions' hospitality and time, I think maybe we better wrap this up. And I just <laughs> want to say again what a great honor it is for all of us in the sport and at Accustas to have you guys present and thanks for the, the stories and the Vice company versa. and everything else. <laughs> thanks, Eddie. That's, that's Vice wonderful. Versa. Vice versa. If the tape's available, I'd like to have a copy of it. I well, think I'm sure uh, we can Pat, pick that up. Fred, get, thank you, too. I couldn't get you to talk right. much. Yeah, I'd like to have one, too. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Well, it's a great honor, you guys. I'm telling you, there's a lot of love here. I mean, uh, really. Um, I can't think of any way I would rather have spent my time tonight than, than doing this. I've enjoyed, it <laughs> I've enjoyed it very much. Thank you, Eddie. You know, we all love you, and you too, George, and Red, and Bill. Well, I, consider, I consider it a great honor, and uh, I appreciate it no end, and I don't know what I could do to, to have more fun than this. Well, thank okay, you, my friend. I, we really appreciate it. Okay. Thank you a lot. All right.